uh, it was the last game of the one day series it was a three one day uh, series three match series against england and then we were uh, supposed to play the three test matches where i went on to make a debut at lords after this uh, i did not know till morning that i was playing uh, it was raining heavily in old trafford you know young sachin he had just started opening in one day cricket so as we were warming up and, and training because it was so cold and the match got delayed because of rain it rains a lot in manchester and this was in the month of may so it's the early part of the summer and there was a lot of rain so as we were going around the ground uh, warming up i was told uh, i'm playing and uh, and obviously i was very excited uh, to play for india uh, and uh, azhar lost the toss azhar was captain he lost the toss and england put us in because it was so overcast and so cloudy and rainy so there was a lot of con seeming conditions for the fast bowlers and before i could put my pads on and get ready at number 3 such it was out he was out in the first over of dominic cox so before i could put my head in place think overthink think the right thing think the wrong thing i was inside and sometimes it's good act sometimes when you are straight pushed into the uh, into the job without giving too much thoughts about it you actually react to situations and and all what i did that day was i just reacted to the ball coming out of the bowler's hand uh, i batted for a while i got 46 as you saw that should have gone went, went out to get a 50 after playing the best fast bowlers and the best english bowlers i got out to a part time bowler in grand thorpe and that took down the leg side but it gave me a lot of confidence it gave me a lot of belief that i can actually play at that level and then about 3 weeks later i went on to play the test match in lords and, and scored a 100 and debut i think before me it was uh, the great pankaj da pankaj roy who played from the east and from bengal and then there was a long gap after that players came in uh, played one or two matches and, and did not make a mark and then had to be replaced so i i would be i would be absolutely not honest if i say that uh, you know they believe that east lack that is like talent at that level so there were a lot of very good players in the first class level the domestic level but when it went to the next level uh, they were not strong enough to go and uh, get a 100 uh, or or play for a long period of time uh, see those things did not bother me uh, you know uh, because i i never believe in the past i never believe in history uh, i i only believe in that particular moment and that particular day for me there was an opportunity I had played a lot of cricket before that. I was on the tour of Australia in '91, <laughs> and then played for four years after that. Before I before I played at Lords, and to be precise, at the Old Trafford, the first clip you saw. Uh, so, you know, for me, it was living in that moment, and I kept saying after that that I went on to play 113 Test matches and 313 One Day matches for India. Uh, uh, only one of the three who played 100 Tests and 300 One Days for India. The other two being. Sachin and, and Rahul Dravid and I'm sure Virat will will get past it uh, very very soon. <coughs> so one of the three who played in that in the complete generation of Indian cricketers. <coughs> so for me, uh, you know, I was just happy being there at Lords. You know, a great venue. We used to live right across the uh, across the footpath in when the hotel is called Danubius now. It used to be called the Holiday Inn when we when we were playing, and I used to walk across, have breakfast in the morning, and just walk across the road to get into the great venue. And I don't know whether you've seen a whether you've seen a game at Lords. Uh, it's fantastic. You know, it's iconic when you when you enter the game in the morning, and and after that, I've gone back to play many a number of matches. Went back as captain, went back as commentator, went back as an administrator. So I could I can see the history behind the ground. How people come and enjoy it. It's an event. I got this hundred on a Saturday, so a Saturday at Lords is completely packed. There's not one seat empty because it's a holiday. It's a weekend in England, and people come and watch Test cricket. And England is still a place where Test cricket is alive. It was very much alive during our generation because there was no T20, and then obviously T20 cricket came in. The faster cricket came in, and and in many places Test matches have started to take a back seat. But England, Lords, Oval are still the venues where Test cricket is still watched and and looked after. So I I I got a hundred. I was overnight batting on 27. And when you show these clips, I remember every shot. And then I can tell you the last shot of the second day evening was the pull shot of Chris Lewis. And then when I came back next morning, I started mainings with that flick which went for four and then went on to bat till three. So 
after so many years, I still remember every innings of it. And, and and I say to everyone that you know I went on to play so many matches for India after that, captain so many matches for India after that. But my mindset on that game was the best in my career because I did not look too far ahead. I did not I did not look at the scoreboard. I just played every ball. I just played every ball and tried and tried my best every ball. And you know I I, I performed a small ritual during the entire innings of six seven hours hours I batted. I used to look to score every 10 runs. So when I took card, my first target was let me get to 10. And when I got to 10, my next target was let me get to 20. Once I get to 20, I look to get to 30. Because it kept my concentration. It kept me focused because sometimes when you take card and look and say I need to get 100, it's too far. It's too far. And I'm sure as Bandar Bank, uh, Mr. Ghosh, who started this from scratch, uh, from 0 uh, 20 years ago and obviously the bank is 7 years old now. Uh, he also have, have progressed this way. Today, uh, you know, deposits and, and, and assets are worth 1 lakh crore. Uh, I don't know exactly the number of customers you have around the world, around the country. 65,000 employees who work for, uh, for, for Bandhan Bank. It's not happened the first day in 20 years. He's built it brick by brick, year after year, month after month, day after day, and he's achieved what he is now. And it's the same thing in life. It's the same thing in sport. When you look at quick success, it does not happen in anything. And, and for me that day, it was 10 runs, uh, 10, 10 runs at, at a time. And then after six hours, I saw I was batting on 19. So I said, I need another 10 runs. Then I got to 100 and then went on to get 130. So life, achievements, progresses is about small goals and keep getting forward. You know, you, know, you don't become uh, Chandrasekhar Ghosh one day, you don't become Sachin Tendulkar in one day, you don't become an Ambani in one day, or you don't become a Narendra Modi in one day. You have to spend your life, time, days, weeks, months working towards it. And I think that's that's the key to success. That, that if you decide that this is my job, this is my life, give everything you have for the rest of your life to be the best. And I think for me it was that day. And I, and, and I, and I went on to play so many matches after that. You know, sometimes I've gone in with full of confidence. Sometimes I've gone in to back thinking where will the next one come from. Because that's what human mind is. You know, it's, it's never static. It wanders. It wanders, it reacts to the situation, it reacts to what pressure you are in, it reacts to what, what mindset you are in. So for me, after that I went on to play 500 games for India, captain of about 210 matches. But the mindset I had in that innings at Lords, I could not, I could not uh, reproduce it again. I've got hundreds, I've got double hundreds, my concentration has suffered while batting. I had to shake myself up and say, hey, look for the next ball. Uh, don't think too far ahead. But that day, it was so much of calmness, it was so much of surety, it was so much of happiness that scoring the next run. And I think it was phenomenal. Uh, I believe in destiny. If you keep working hard and if you keep <laughs> trying and if you believe you can do it, it will happen. And for me, all those runs of, on that particular day was the efforts I put in from 1987. When I first started playing as an under-15 boy, uh, I was 15 year old then. When I got picked for the state as an under-15 cricketer, then, then I went on to play for the under-19s, the country under-19, and then India. So it's a process which has taken me to, to that day. And then after that, I always say that you know what success does to you is it gives you the confidence from within. Because in sport, if you get a hundred on that day, it's for that particular day. When you come back the next day, the next game, you start from zero. You don't carry those runs forward. But what that hundred gives you is that belief that next day you come and you play well. And you, you have the ability to play well. Because for me, and I'm sure he's such a successful person, you've been in the corporate world for such a long period of time. Uh, you know, your life is about faith. It's about faith in yourself. Everybody gets tested, everybody gets uh, you know, rewarded, everybody gets rejected because that's the circle of life. What remains constant is the faith in your ability which keeps you go through that circle. It was very tough that day at, uh, at Eden Gardens. Uh, Australia got over 400 in the first innings. 
and being 190 on in the first inning. So they had an opportunity to make us follow on, which they did. You know, we had no discussions in the dressing room. Sometimes when things don't go your way, uh, I've realized over a period of 20 years now is that you just let it be and you just work. So I remember coming back after that morning session, we got all out on the third day in the first hour. In the first hour on the third day, VVS Lakshman had got 60 uh, and we, got all, we were all out for 190. And as, as, as the batting unit entered into the dressing room, Steve Waugh asked us to follow on. And uh, I remember sitting with John and, and, and Sachin and Rahul and did not discuss anything. All, all what we did was, was that we got into a huddle and said to everyone, just go and play. Go, go and look at your individual performances and go and do the best you can. Uh, the only change we made was because Lakshman was batting and had got a 70 odd in the first innings. And because he was in form, <coughs> We told him to bat at number three, and then and then things happened. Many people have asked me uh, that, what did you do to get uh, 600 in the second innings? I said it's nothing. You know, I, I said if you if you expect the Indian team to recapture or recapitulate the same in another Test match, I don't think it will happen. What happened that day at Eden from the morning of the third day till the morning of the fifth day was an absolute freak. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, you know, Almighty reserves the best for you. When you work hard, when you're honest, you get the best in life. And it's happened to Chandrasekhar Babu as well. You know, as he said, he, did, he found hard to get the licenses. People were saying he did not have the, the requirements to get into a bank. But he persisted, he persisted, he believed himself. He had worked over a period of uh, 14 years before that and said that, I'm going to do this. And I think it was the same that, that afternoon at Eden Gardens. We went into the fourth day without losing a wicket. The entire fourth day, I, I remember getting out on the evening of the third day. I got 50 out in the, uh, in the second innings. And we were 220 for four when I got out. I was batting at five and Rahul was batting at six. We had just got past the Australian score. And Rahul walked in, Lakshman was batting on the other end. <laughs> Or 80 or 90, and then what happened afterwards was history. The entire fourth day, India did not lose a wicket, and we finished at 600. I remember that evening after the fourth day finished, both Rahul Dravid and VVS Lakshman were in the dressing room on drips. It was a hot day in Calcutta, and they batted and batted and batted, and they got dehydrated, and, and they went on to drips after the after the day's play. And uh, I still remember we came on to the fifth day and me and John, Australia was a great side, probably the best side of the generation and, and I think the best side I've seen in the last 30, 40 years, the steep ball led side. <coughs> on the fifth day morning, as we kept on batting, we kept on batting and I kept on walking up to John and saying, when do we declare, when do we declare? So every time I would go to him, he would say, hold on, let's get a big lead, let's get a 400 lead because this Australian team is so good. They're capable of getting 350 uh, in a day. So his mind was, you know, the next test is in Chepov in Madras, where India doesn't lose. So let's save this test match and go in with an opportunity to level the series in Madras. You know, in the first hour, this Eden Gardens was packed. There was 125,000 people because in those days, they used to have those cement, uh, cement seating areas, not the bucket seats now. So. <coughs> It was a packed stadium and you know I got a small message from my father who was who was watching the game from upstairs and it was an hour after the first, after the start of the play on the fifth morning. So he, he you know I, I played in Calcutta, born in Calcutta. So he sent a message through one of the one of the staff in the dressing room telling me how long how long are you going to bat? When are you going to declare? The entire stadium is asking that question. And you're sitting in the ground as captain and not taking a decision. So I still remember vividly, I went on to John and said, John, we must declare. John said, no, another 30 runs. I said, no, let's put this at this 360, we are ahead. Whatever happens will happen. If Australia are good enough to get 360 in five hours, let them get it. So we declared at about, about half an hour before our lunch. Australia went in uh, at lunch, no loss, 30 odd. And then things started changing after lunch. We got three wickets. 
during that session of <coughs> lunch in tea, I dropped Steve Waugh at Backward Shot Lane just before tea. And I, I still remember that look he gave me as he walked back into the, into, the, into the tea time saying, and I could see it on his face that, you know, probably we have managed to save this test. He came back after tea, first ball he got up, flicking and caught a backward shot leg. And then we got seven wickets, seven wickets after tea. So for me, that game was a freak. And, and since then, from 2000, now it's 2000, 2022, I don't think any team has had the courage to follow on oppositions. Because every time they would do it, the captain would think about the game key, hope this team does not come and do it. So, for me, I don't think it will be possible to repeat that test match. But what, what the test match and the test series, we went on to Chennai and win the series 2-1. So, what that series did for us is completely transform the team. You know, situations like this, moments like this, transform individuals. And I think Indian cricket got transformed on that day and, and the next five years we just got better and better and better whether it's in Australia, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's in England and we just kept winning and winning and, and becoming a better team. I think the best organizations are a blend of youth and experience. You need the flamboyance of youth and you need the mindset of, and the calmness of an experienced person. And I think I was fortunate enough to have a team which had both the blend of rich experience and, and young talent. I believe in certain things when I, when I do a job. I believe in talent. As, as Mr. Ghosh said, that it's the team. It's the people who drive the, drive the organization. And if you, and if you read uh, the uh, successes of great business people, they say the best investment and the most important investment is the investment in talent. Because that actually takes your organization ahead. It's infrastructure is there, machinery is there, raw materials are there, but it's the talent which actually drives the business or drives the team. I led a team where everyone would have been captain of India before me. And I considered myself fortunate to captain them. Sachin was good enough to captain, Rahul was good enough to captain, Anil was good enough to captain, Vivius was good enough to captain. And among all of them, I became captain. So for me, I had to strike a balance with those experienced players. And the best thing which I did during my six years of tenure as captain is make them leaders as well. It was not just my team. It was Sachin's team, Rahul's team, Anil's team, uh, Sehwan's team, Harbhajan's team, Zaheer's team, Lakshman's team. And I got them responsible. When I would sit and pick a team, I would sit with all six of them. What is your opinion about X? What is your opinion about Y? And I would listen to them. If Sachin would come and say that pick Seva, I'll go and pick him. I will not, even if I didn't believe it, I will go and tell him that okay, I'll pick him because you believe it. In that way, I made him an important part of that story. Mm -hmm. Same with Rahul, when he was my vice captain. There was a time when he was almost dropped from the side, from the one day side. But you know, I stood up for him and ultimately he finished as vice captain of the Monty side. So you know, these things don't go unnoticed in a team environment. So it was not just Saurav Ganguly leading, but it was six of them leading Indian cricket. And, and so when they went out to bat, and they went out to bowl, they felt that this is my team. I am responsible for it winning, I am responsible for it losing. And it created a fantastic atmosphere with it. And I think that was the reason we changed. <coughs> we played as one. We identified small performances. You know, say a KF and a Yuvraj. One batted at six, one batted at seven. They never got an opportunity to get hundreds. But they would get a 40, a 30, which would win matches. You identify those contributions. You know, you highlight those contributions. Because a Ganguly or a Tendulkar or a Dravid at the top got an opportunity to get a hundred because they batted more number of overs. But when a Yuvraj came in at number six, 20 balls left. KF came in at number seven, 30 balls left. And they contributed to your win. So as a, as a leadership group, as a team, you identified their contributions in the same manner as, as the ones at the top who got hundreds. You know, in, in, his, in his organization, it's not just about him. It's that small, down-the-level individual who goes to customers and says, do a bundle kind of put in a deposit, you know, try us out, 
will give you more interest. Your money is safe with me. Those are <coughs> as important in the organization as he is. And I think that's how you build organizations and make it into a success. Money over. You know, we, we had got off to a great start. As you saw, 78 for no loss, and I think this was about 8 or 9 overs. We were chasing 325, and in those days, 325 used to be a lot of runs in one degree. So I went up to him at the start of the over and said that, Viru, we've got a good start. I think we can win this game. So let's not, let's not miss this at this stage. We have a long batting, it's a good wicket, it's a fast outfield. We'll get to 325. So he was on strike to Ronnie and Rani, and he hit the first ball, as you saw, over mid on for four. I went up to him, tapped the, tapped the wicket and said that we've got, a, we've got four runs at the start of the over, let's look at taking singles, we'll finish with eight and nine runs and over and we'll be close for the chase. He said, yeah, yeah, dada, chinta mat kare. Next ball, you saw, it was pitched in the middle stump and he played it past point for four. So I went up to him again and said, ki, do ball mein aat raka ke, ab aram si khe na, ki hamei nahi chaati ki wicket kare. He said, ha, ha, chinta mat kare. The third ball he hit over mid-off. He hit over mid-off for four. I again went up to him and just looked at him and smiled. And I was angry from inside, or rather worried from inside. Because, you know, the match is in our grip. Let's not lose, lose this. The next ball, again he swept. He swept from the middle stump and if he would have missed, if he would have missed, he would have been plum out. So I went up to the end of the over and said, I go joke at night, I go bolo I did that ball. But then I realized when I when I finished, when we won that game and when I went back to the room and I, I, I actually recollected that incident. So I said to myself that, why did you have to do this? You know, by going and telling him every ball, I'm trying to restrict his thought process. Because at the end of the day, cricket may be a team sport, but it's individual as well. Because when the bowler is at the top of his mark <coughs> and you're on strike as a batsman, it's just you, your mindset and the bowler. The captain does not matter, the, the non-striker does not matter, nobody matters. So at the end of the day, what is going to make me win that game is what is going on in the head of that person on strike. And, and I realized that and, and ever since after that, I did not interfere with the batsman when he was batting. You know, my suggestion would be is, or my discussion with him would be that we have to get 300 in 50 overs. You know how to do it. Play your game. But once you get in and once you get set, don't throw it away. Win the game for us. Because I realized that if I would have gone to Sehwag and said, you keep defending, you keep defending and not hitting, he'll get out. Because that's not the way he plays. So I think it's very important when you're a leader and when you're a captain of a, of, a, of a side, it's about understanding that it's not my way or highway. You know, it's about understanding the person who you're playing with. How does he become successful? How does Seva get to a test match 100? Now you go to Dravid, you don't expect him to hit four boundaries in an hour. You know he's going to defend, he's going to lead, he's going to back six hours and get a 100. So you go to Dravid and tell him, Okay, if that's the way for your success, you do that. And I think many a number of times when we become bosses, when we become leaders, when we become captains, we go to you and say, this is the way I think, you think the same. And I think that's wrong. It's about understanding what you are thinking. And it's about finding out over a period of time whether your thinking brings success to me. And then adjusting and doing it according. I think that is very important. And I think that over, amidst within the Seva's madness, it made me understand, this was the early days of my, of my captaincy, it made me understand that let players be, make them work hard, make them train, make them secure, give them a plan, give them a goal, say my motto is to win matches, not just draw cricket matches. I either win or I lose. There's nothing in between. And then let them play the game. I went in 2011 and it was a cold day in England and I had a cap and a jacket on and a, and, and a, and a glass and I'm wearing my specs and I took a couple of my friends to see Lords. Invariably we went up to the dressing room and there was a steward and steward standing. So he's telling my friend, 
This is where Saurabh Ganguly took his shirt off. And I look at him and he's smiling at me. He does not know me. He hasn't recognized me because he must have come new to the, to the job. And his job was to show a lot of visitors because Lodz is a place which is a tourist spot. You know, people go buy tickets, go to the museum, go to the ground, they take you to the long room, they take you inside the ground, they take you to the practice facilities, they take you to the wonderful museum inside which you've been, which you've been before. So, I remember that steward looking at me and saying, you know that Indian captain, Saurav Ganguly, he took his shirt off in this country. I said, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll look at the video and find out. So, that's what it is. So, and, uh, and uh, you know, for me, that wind was more important than taking the shirt off. And, and I think uh, we went back again there. Uh, we won many a number of matches, went back to England, won a series in 2007. So that country had great memories for me. My first test at Lords, as you saw, in 1996, where I went on to get 100. So that ground has always given me good memories in my playing career. Oh, there, is. There, is. there is. There is the Edridge stand, there is the Compton stand, uh, there is the Pavilion. So Lords has stands named after them. Uh, not everyone, because they corporatize a lot. If you look at the GP, it's, it's, a, it's called the GP Morgan Lords. So they, they look at sponsorships, they, are, you know, they just don't leave it empty. Because it's, it is such a valuable place right in the heart of London, in the middle of London. So it, it, it generates enormous amount of revenues. You know, and it's not just a cricket ground. You have conferences there, marriages are held there, birthday parties are held there, people can have meetings, people can have lunches. So they completely use it commercially. You know, there was a discussion in Lords. <coughs> You've seen Lords, I don't know whether Chandrasekhar Babu has seen Lords. That is the back part of the Lords, which is the nursery. And underneath, underneath that bit, it's the metro which goes through, the London Tube. The London Tube goes underneath those nursery. So the, so the British government has to pay Lords Cricket Ground a charge for letting that tube go underneath the nursery. So every bit of that ground is commercialized, you know, and, and people want to do it because, because, you know, sport, whether you go to Laws, whether you go to the Old Trafford, where Manchester play their football, whether you go to Manchester City, whether you go to Chelsea and, and watch football, they make, it a, they make it an event. They make it a place for people to bring their children, their families and, and, and say that this is the ground where Ronaldo played. This is the ground where Sir Alex Ferguson was the coach. This is the ground where Ricky Ponty got a hundred, or Steve Waugh got a hundred. So they, so they create history around, around, around sporting. See, I did eight years of administration. I was president of CAB for five years and was president of the board for three years. <coughs> All this have tenures, have terms, after which you have to leave and which you have to go. Uh, but I felt the challenge as a cricketer was, was a lot more because it was real time. You know, when you do backroom work, sitting in tables and, and running the game, uh, you have time to do great things. But if you nicked a delivery from Glenn McGrath on the first morning of a test, you were out. You did not have time to correct it. So I think that's a major difference. Uh, but you know, when you did administration, you realized that you could contribute so much. You could make things better for a cricketer. And, and me being a player who played for a long period of time, understood that uh, I was a cricketer's administrator. Yes, you had to take decisions because there's so much happening. There's so much cricket happening, there's so much money around, there's women's cricket, there's domestic cricket, so you had to take calls at times with certain individuals. But I think I thoroughly loved it. Uh, you know, if you see the last three years uh, in Indian cricket, so many good things have happened. You know, IPL during COVID, which was such a such difficult time for all of us in this room, for all of us in this country, we did not know how to deal with it. You know, did COVID, IPL for that, the broadcast rights, which went to an all-time high. The IPL, which has established a brand, established a brand all around the world. Uh, the women, the under-19s winning the World Cup in the West Indies. That was fantastic. I wish the women won the Commonwealth Games gold. I would have been the first one, although the silver is also the first silver won by the women's team in a, in a Commonwealth. But they were in a position to be in Australia that night at, at, at Birmingham. Uh, the, the senior team winning in Australia. So these were great moments, uh, great moments as, as an administrator. I hope they do well in Australia now with, where they are for the T20 World Cup. Because this is a tremendous cricket team. There's so much talent, there's so much uh, power, there's so much class in that side. You know, you, you, you expect them to win all the time. So it was a great journey, a lot of learning experience. Uh, but the challenge of being a player was completely different. So you can't compare both. You can't play forever, 
You can't be an administrator forever. But you know, it's been great fun going both and, and seeing both sides of the coin. You know, I, I've seen the transformation in sport. When I first played in 1989, I used to get 400 rupees for a great match, uh, for a Ranji Trophy game. So I've, I've seen that and I've seen what cricket has become now. So I've seen the entire transformation from, from, from this side to that side of the game.